Welcome to Comfort Havoc number two. My name is J.S. Williams Jr. I'm picking up where I left off. Um, this is part two about the young South Korean college student at Boston who somehow convinced her boyfriend to kill himself and that she's going to trial. I think they had to trial today and she pleaded not guilty. Okay, so in this video, this is part two, so I'm going to give you guys my perspective on this as a man who has had some mental illness and has attempted suicide more than once in my life. I'm nobody better to speak on this than me. Alright. I think this gotta be elevated. Sorry. Video is gonna be a little bit disgruntled. Okay. So clearly you can't get all of me. We can go there. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so as I was saying, there's a lot of power in people over people. So I'm going to put this nicely as possible because I, I honestly, truly to God, feel that young man's pain. All right? And I say that Speaking from my own experiences with being in a relationship with someone that I fell in love with way too deep. Okay, and that does happen. It happens more to men than you know about. It happens more to men than you are willing to hear because we all tend to turn a blind eye to it. Before I go any further, may the young man rest in peace. I cannot pronounce their names. I am not Korean, so I can't get their names right. And rather than waste time on trying to do that, we're just going to say the two college students, male and female, from South Korea. All right. So, to be honest, I've had really bad relationships with women. Really bad. From probably the very first relationship, to now that I am currently single and I'm probably going to stay that way until I die. Of course, I have my secrets and I have, um, you know, a girl that I'm crushing and thirsty for, which will probably never happen. But I'm not going to say that because anything is possible. All right? Anything is possible. If I get really lucky, anything is possible. But that's not here or there. This is about these two young Korean students. So the male Korean students suffer from depression, which I suffer from depression. And a person who suffers from depression, it is real hard for us to talk to people about what's going on in our here. And our synaptics don't work the way your synaptics. For the most part, we function like normal people. Trust me, we function like normal people. I have moments where I have bouts of depression. Thank God for graphic novels that I'm working on because it, it takes me on a journey. It helps me escape. It lets my mind flow. And not everyone is blessed to have that outlet. Also, not everyone is blessed to have the military helping them out. And not everyone is also blessed to have friends like I have. Also, people are not blessed with the courage to talk to their friends about their problems. All right? It takes a lot of courage to admit that you have a problem. It takes a more courage to accept that you have a problem. However, problems can be solved. There is no problem that truly can't be solved. All right? So this young man, according to the thing I read earlier in the other video, he had mental abuse from her, but he had depression and all kinds of other stuff. I'm not making excuses for why he killed himself, because no one ever really knows why someone really kills themselves except for one tiny little thing. Most people that kill themselves are crying out for help, and they couldn't get it, and they really just want the pain to stop. And death is permanent pain stopping. You know? I've gone down this road one too many times, and I'll probably go down this road a few more times before I get my shit completely together. I fight depression every day. So I know where he's coming from. When I broke, let me rephrase that, when my heart got broken by my ex-fiance after me putting two years of my life into her, really wanting to marry her, I, I was happy. You know, I was happy with her. I could have been happy with her for the rest of my life. But I couldn't make her happy. And I don't know why we broke up. And it'll be 10 years that we've been apart next year. And I, out of the 10 years, I spent at least five of them, five and a half, 
trying to win her back. And that was probably like my first big mistake. Alright? She wasn't a mistake. Me trying to win her back was the mistake. That's not here or there for that video, but I just wanted you guys to give an insight on how I can relate to this guy. So my options were, because I really wanted to kill myself the night we broke up, I really attempted to do it, just couldn't find a way to go out that would be quick and painless versus slow and painful. Because I know this is going to sound really fucked up, but if I, if I, if I got to go, I don't want to feel it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to feel it. I just want to be gone. I want it to be quick. No. Um, this young man jumped off a roof. And he died. I'm pretty sure it was painless. But I'm pretty sure it wasn't quick. Might not have been painless either. Because impact is impact. And he jumped off of a roof. And that was pretty bad. And according to what I read. Her text messages. She found him. By using the location something or another. This is why technology is great when it works. And she got there. She tried to talk him down. She tried to get his brother there. And I guess time and just it didn't happen. And this young man died. So then she flew back to South Korea and they brought her back for her trials. And she pleaded not guilty because the other Texas said that she was trying to stop her. We are in a really bad place in the world where we can't sit and talk to each other as adults. You know, if you're going to end a relationship, I don't give a damn why you end in a relationship. But be honest with the person that you are in the relationship with. You don't feel this way about this person anymore. Sit down and have a conversation. I never got that. Which is why I kept trying to win her back. Because I couldn't figure out what I did wrong. So this guy's probably felt the same way because she was breaking up with him according to the article. And he just couldn't take it anymore. The pain of a breakup affects people differently. Right? There's a song called um, When the Heart Breaks It Doesn't Break Even. And um... That came out the same year that I had my breakup, and um, the army saved my life. You know, initially I went to the army because I'd rather die in battle and be a hero than commit suicide here and be a zero. All right, and that's kind of how that worked out. Sadly, I didn't die a hero, and I'm still a zero, and I have a new hit. But you know, that's just how I have to cope with that. You know, my martial arts, I'm getting back up to par. But this young man didn't have other outlets, apparently. he um, There's not enough information for them to um, say what he was into and things like that. I'm going to kill somebody because I know they see them damn lights. Anyway, moving on. The young man took his life because he loved this girl just that deep. And... It was a sad thing, you know, because when you're in love with somebody, whether your gender is male or female, one person is going to love somebody deeper than the other. And the person who's in love has to be explained to fully on what happened to end the relationship. The person who's not in love don't get that. They don't understand how deep that hurt hurts that person. All right? And you know, there's always going to be somebody who's going to look at this video and say, oh, you can get over that shit. It's just pussy. All right, here's the thing. When you're in love, it's not just about pussy and sex. And if you're female, it's not just about a dick, a lick, and sex. All right? It's about this shit in here and this shit right here. And sometimes they don't always work, but when they work together and the other person that you're in the relationship with works together, you get some kind of peace and harmony and relationships take work. If you're not willing to work on the relationship, then you really should not get into relationships unless you get into F and B relationships. That means friends with benefits for those who aren't up to speed. Now, those relationships are okay because there's nothing wrong with hookups and everybody likes, loves, and most people need sex. And that was from the man's point of view. I can't say that I've met many women who need sex, but as a man, I know I need sex like breathing and drinking water and taking a shower. So I basically need sex like I need air. And, and most men do. Not everybody's going to own it. And we, we're not all sick freaks about it. So let me cover the man's ass real quick. We're not all sick freaks about it. But we just really like sex. You know, that's just the way it is. Now, in the next video, I'm going to try and touch 
from the girl's point of view. But I'm not a girl, and I'm not gay, so it's going to be a real difficult video. But for this video, you know, from the guy's point of view, I've been in his shoes. I have gotten to the edge of a building quite a few times and wondered, would it hurt when I go? The night that um, my ex fiance broke up with me, I looked at a building, and I was looking for an access point. And I couldn't find the access point, but I seen these spike things surrounding a power box. And my plan was, if she didn't take me back when I made my last phone call to her, then I would jump off the building, off the little spike things, because I figured, because they were sharp as hell, I figured they'd decapitate me. If anything, if it didn't kill me, I wouldn't be saved by the time somebody found me. And that was the thing, you know, I was like, okay. Next day, you know, I woke up, I got a little bit of clarity. I went and took the ASVAB test, and I passed. I didn't pass with high colors, because I got infantry, but I passed. And then I talked to my um, recruiter, and I got all my shit set, and it was like, you can do this and get do the drills. We can ship your ass out right now. In my weakened mental condition, I didn't want to do drills. I was 37 years old, and I reached, fuck it. So I said, send my ass on. When I got to the army, I went through a lot of shit. Not all good shit, not all bad shit, but an equal amount, but more good than bad. I met motherfuckers that gave a damn about me. And that turned my perspective of life around. And it really helped me out a little bit until I got hurt. Then most of the motherfuckers gave a damn about me and the people in charge really didn't. And that kind of fucking hit me with some more depression because I just really needed to be somewhere where people gave a fuck about me. Because my family sure as fuck didn't at the time either. And so, when I got transferred into Delta, we're going to skip golf because that's like not relevant that I wanted to kill two drill sergeants. Anyway, I got into golf, I mean, excuse me, I got into Delta and I found another group of people who really wanted me around. And it made me want to live, you know, really made me want to live. And then I re-injured my leg and I failed to qualify my rifle. So I got an honorable discharge and they sent me home. But they didn't know how fucked up I was with my injured leg. And while they were treating what they thought was the injury, they were actually doing more damage to me. So I got home and I had, um, I had more issues. I basically had PTSD as well as depression. And I wanted to kill myself real bad. I didn't know how bad my hip was, which would make my shit twice as bad. So, get the McGuire, because I'm having all these stomach issues, man. And I finally get in there, and they make me drink this crap, and poop it all out. And then they hit me with, you have good news, and you have bad news. And then you have worse news. So it's like, alright, well, give me the worst news first. And it's like, I right, long and short, they told me I need a new hip. And if I didn't get all this stuff done in my life, I was going to die. And the way they was talking, I thought I was just going to die. But I wasn't going to die. I didn't have a bleeding ulcer. And I went through all this shit, and here I am. I know how that young man felt because I've been there. And depression truly has no cure. There is treatment, but there is truly no cure other than to never get depressed in your life. Which is not impossible if you're a happy person. But if you've never known happiness, the world is a horrible ass place and if you haven't been woken up to that this video may have just saved somebody's life because a lot of people don't know what depression really does to you all right and i'm going to tell you there are days where you don't want to wake up there are days where you don't want to see the sun there are nights before that day that you don't want to wake up that you pray that you die in your sleep and i'm a person who has done that every night for a very long time once I got out of the army, once I had my hip replacement, they told me I could never do Kung Fu again. I was done. I picked up a bow and arrow. Started working with that. But it wasn't the same. I could do my fan technique. I could do my nunchucks. But it wasn't the same as being able to actually get in there, get those legs up, you know, do my fighting, make my films. And if you've never been depressed, you have been blessed. And you have no fucking idea how difficult it is to come down from a depressing moment 
when the only thing you want is the pain stop and death is the only fucking option you have. So I know how that young man felt right up until he jumped. You know, because I wanted to do that. I have attempted suicide quite a few times. Not anything extreme like cutting your wrist and shit, but you know, um, I've thought about jumping. I've never OD'd. I don't like pain. I don't want to get my stomach pumped. I don't like needles. So I wasn't going to do any of that shit. But I thought, like, reckless behavior. You know, jumping out of stuff. You know, jumping off of stuff. You know, doing something that would severely injure me. But it would be, have to do something fun. You know, like, thought about going mountain climbing and then just jumping off the fucking mountain. I did think those things. So I got to write my first graphic now. Love 13. It's not published, but I'm working on that. And, you know... It started helping me. I got help from my doctor, Bishop, and she and I had this plan. So every day, she said, for at least an hour or two, play Mass Effect. And so I did. I started coming up with all different kinds of Shepherds, which I will be revisiting after my exams. And Commander Shepherd and Mass Effect saved my life. You know, and my graphic novel, they saved my life. And that was before my dad died. And then my dad died, and I had to finish my graphic novel without him. And so I dedicated it to him. And it's not published yet, but I'm still working on that. But Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, and Andromeda, they helped me pull my shit together. I still have bouts of depression. Now, I want to end this video on that. I still have bouts of depression. But it's not as bad as it was. It's not much better. But I'm in better shape than I was mentally than I've been in a long time. Now, that being said, I'm James from Shoes, Cover Episode 2. Stay tuned for part 3. Be seeing you.